God is good. All right, I just need to watch my time a little bit. Is this a little loud? A little ringing? I'll try to be mindful of time. I'll try. I cannot guarantee that I'll be short, but I'll try to be uh, shorter than usual. Uh, I want to, first of all, I want to welcome all of you into our Father's house. And uh, I'm always uh, grateful that when you gather, there is, there is always room for everyone. No matter who we are, where we come from, no matter what our week was last week, there's a room in our Father's house for all of us. Sometimes you come, sometimes I come, even as a pastor. I, I know I'm a pastor and ordained minister, but sometimes I come, and like, probably like all of us, sometimes I come, Outside looking okay. Inside, still struggling. Some of the songs we sang today really spoke to my heart a lot. Really encouraged me. And yes, uh, we are renewed and made, un made anew in Christ Jesus, but I come as a broken vessel that was being, that was being renewed and being restored. And I believe God's promise is true. I know he has done all the mighty things. I know he's promised to stand, but I'm in the place of waiting for that to be fulfilled in my life. Amen? Amen. And they, I, I, I'm reminded that faith always involves waiting. If there's no waiting, there's no faith. If there's no waiting, there's no hope. Hope means there is waiting involved. And Abram's faith was uh, confirmed and demonstrated by his waiting upon God's promise. Amen? Amen? This is not even my message yet. Okay. All right. God is good. I want to welcome all of you. Uh, you're welcome in my father's house, which is my, my house, which is your house. Uh, it was an amazing week to see kids love, enjoy, and this whole week long, Monday to Friday. I started as a children's uh, Sunday school teacher. Uh, 1979, even before I was a Christian. That's how I came to Christ, teaching little kids. And the thing is, we spend a lot of time and energy, resources, so that we will so seize into their hearts. We might not see the fruit right away, right now, but seeds are being sown into their soul. I remember uh, I was talking to one of the, one of the teach leaders here. He said, you know, I, haven't just rem I was just reminded just now, he said, when I, was, when I was little, I went to Sunday school and VBS. And she, he, because he, he, thought I am never, he thought I never went to church until older. But I remember when I was little, I went to, going to VBS when I was little. And I remember there that, that, not, and, and that I accepted Christ. I still remember one of the ladies I know, um, uh, she's probably now in early 50s. She told me when she was in kindergarten in our Sunday school class, Teacher said, told her, all the kids in the class, if you want Christ to come into your heart, if you can ask him. And, and that day she went home, she went into a closet, I don't know why. She prayed there in the closet asking, asking Jesus to come in. She said, that's when I got saved. So we are sowing seed into, seeds into our children's heart. We might not see it right now, but it is, it is germinating, it is growing, taking root in it. I'm, I'm grateful. And I have, I have no problem us, with us investing as much money needed to get it done. It was amazing. And I, and I was being a grandpa, just having fun with them, bothering them, giving them pain, sitting their food, eating their food. And all the kids love me, I think. <laughs> I think. Anyway, uh, so while I was on the way to ch uh, church, I got a um, cacao talk message from Pastor Mimi saying, they arrived in Istanbul safely. They had a two-hour layover. They'll be going to uh, Serbia now. They should be arrived in Serbia right now. And everything was okay. Everything is good. I know they're going to come back fat. The food is amazing in Serbia as well as in Turkey. Yeah. The food is all, it's all about food for me. You go to mission because food is good. And people are good too. But God is amazing, but food is always good. Anyway. Uh, 
The reason I, I want to talk about this topic, and I might have shared about uh, this passage probably more than once before, because uh, as I was praying for our Serbia team, I felt as though God was reminding me this was not only for the children they'll be working with. They'll be running a preschool camp for the Chinese immigrant kids in Serbia in Belgrade, and they'll be working with uh, Romani kids. These are gypsies in Novi Sad, second largest city in Serbia. But also, I believe God really wanted them to go out to encourage some of the leaders. It happens to be all female leaders. The, the one who runs the youth camp in Novi Sad is missionary Hannah Huang. And she's been out over probably 12 years. And, and you know, woman, single woman ministering there was not easy. And I know also May, uh, uh, the Yanko, uh, Yankovic, she's a Chinese uh, lady married to a Serbian person. She runs the, uh, the mustard seed uh, preschool. But she has been having sicknesses the last couple of years. She was overseeing it by having difficulty. And we, uh, I know they're going to go and pray for as well. When they, go to, when they go to Turkey, they'll be meeting up with the Resurrection Church as well as uh, Noreen Brunson, Andrew Brunson's wife. And they want to encourage them. I feel like some of, one of the ministries they'll be doing is encouragement, ministry of encouragement. We do some, we often we do ministries, ministries of love, ministries of uh, uh, power and evangelism. We also do ministries of encouragement. So the, one, one of the aspects of this ministry will be ministry of encouragement. Especially as Pastor Mimi goes out, she'll be, she'll be, a, she'll be a special, I think, tool to encourage, I believe, as well as Emma and Mary, our youngest ones, to go out in missions. You know, and it will be an amazing time. So I want to talk about encouraging today. Let me see. I have about 25 slides. I'm going to skip some. Let me start with this quote from one of my favorite Bible teachers, Chuck Swindle. He's getting old. I don't know how long he'll, he, more he will do this, but remember this. No matter how high you may climb in life, no matter how great the promotion or important the title, it is always appropriate time, appropriate that you take time to encourage. I believe the topic today God wants me to share is about encouragement, encouraging one another. And, and, uh, and I know I alluded to it already, but often we come, we look healthy and strong outside. We do not know what is inside as we come in. You know, and we may come in with uh, some pressures and, you know, and, and, and issues. We, may, we all of us carry some. As you come, it is, all, it is always right, always good. Oh, we are all called to uh, encourage and, and take time to encourage. Whether spoken or written, a few encouraging words can make an enorm enormous difference in an outcome of a single event, or in fact, even a lifetime. Encouragement is a power. I mean, this, not only Christians, but a lot, most people in the world know this. Our marriage gets strengthened when we learn to encourage one another rather than discouraging or cutting down one another. You know, our workplaces become a whole lot more bearable when we learn to encourage rather than discourage or cut down one another. Your wife, Cooking gets better when you are encouraging her. I'm not saying because of me. I'm saying for you guys. My wife is all, cooking is always great and amazing anyway. And encouragement does work, does help. But I want to say more than that encouragement. We need to, encouragement is good. We need to encourage. I believe encouragement is one of the uh, powerful work of Holy Spirit. Really. And I want to talk about one of my two most favorite people in the Bible. Everybody has their favorite characters in the Bible. Often people like Peter, Elijah, different people. But I like two specific people more than others. One is Jonathan. The other is Barnabas. And, and if you know me long enough, you know I speak about, talk about Barnabas a lot. And there's an aspect of Barnabas just, just stuck out to me this week. I want to talk about Barnabas a little bit. Anyway. I found this uh, a verse, Proverbs chapter 11, verse 25. 
It says, who refreshes others will be refreshed. Isn't that a good verse? You didn't know that was in there, did you? And I didn't know it was in there because my NASB doesn't say that way. My NASB, which I love, it says, those who water will be watered. It's like, huh? Where did you get that here? And this is the NLT version. Who refreshes others will be refreshed. That makes more sense. Who waters others will be watered. Don't make sense to me. But anyway, that's a good verse. Those who refreshes others will be refreshed. I'll just be honest with you. You know, about, about three weeks ago, we had Alana from Thailand with us. And I remember uh, as she was here, I had a lunch with her on, I think, Thursday. As I'm talking with her, we had, you know, all kind of things. And, and she tells me whenever she comes to Maryland, she feels she's coming home. She feels refreshed. And I told her a little bit that, you know, I feel like I'm in a little tiny, minor, little, very small depression. And next, two, about next week and a half, she was coming after me every single time trying to encourage me. She was encouraging me every turn. And she was really encouraging to me in many ways. And she was amazing. Anyway, those who, uh, who refreshes others will be refreshed. May the Lord do that in our lives. I want to begin this, okay. I want to begin with Barnabas a little bit. If you can have, if you can open your Bible to Acts chapter 4, verse 32 to 37. Uh, we have a number of places we want to read. Uh, I may skip some, but uh, this will be main text. Acts chapter 4, verse 32 to 37. I want to talk about Barnabas. Acts chapter 4, 32 to 37. If you have a Bible with you, if you don't mind just waving a little bit, it will be helpful. Okay, thank you. About five of you have a Bible. About 50 of you have your phone waving or not. Okay, let me, let me, let's look at it together. All the believers were united in heart and mind, and they felt that what they owned was not their own. So they shared everything they had. It's talking about the early church. I'm reading from NL, NLT version just for today. I still like NASB. I'm loyal to my NASP. Anyway, and this early church had a remarkable thing happening among them. They felt the presence of God, love of God, that transforming their hearts and minds. The community was transformed. It says, verse 33, the apostles testified powerfully to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and God's great blessing was upon them all. Verse 34, there were no need, needy people among them, because those who own land or houses would sell them and bring the money to the apostles to give to those in need. This is an amazing community that is that they had such a experience of God's love and they were living their love with one another. When they saw somebody in need, they were willing to even to sell their homes, sell their things to care for each other. Amazing. Amazing. Right Now, let me look at verse 36. This is, imp uh, I want to highlight here. For instance, there was a Joseph, the one of one of the disciple, apostles nicknamed Barnabas, Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. He was from the tribe of Levi and came from the island, island of Cyprus. He sold a field he owned and brought the money to the apostles. Apparently, it's talking about how the early church they were sharing, and some of the some people, not just one, some people were willing to sell their own things to help the needy among them, and Barnabas was among those people, and in, and, and they specifically mentioned Barnabas here. The thing that I want to highlight is that it says his name was Joseph, but you know, and and the Book of Acts mentions. Joseph, this Barnabas, this person many times, it's his only place you'll mention is Joseph. After that, they'll use, call him by his nickname, Barnabas. By the way, the name Barnabas is made of two words. Ba means son. Nabas. And, and people, there's no clear conclusion, uh, no uh, conclusion, but many scholars believe it is Hebrew word for uh, prophet, prophecy, Nabas. Son of prophecy. That's why he said, which means son of encouragement. The word encouragement here, I want to highlight it a little bit. The word is para uh, the clay uh, seos, 
now I'm, I am now talking to somebody who is an expert in Greek. Probably you know, the, Sue has been doing so well in Greek that he's going to be a TA this fall. So I don't want to mention things that, you know, he may say, Pastor Q, you're wrong. <laughs> and, you know, I, I, I realize you've been teaching me all wrong all the time. <laughs> para kalesios, I think, I think made of two words. Para is, I think, together. Uh, uh, Sue. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Alongside. Para alongside. Kaleosis, I believe, is the word meaning kaleo, call to call alongside with. If somebody's called alongside to encourage, comfort and encourage. But if you remember, Holy Spirit is called paraclete. Same, same root word. Paraclete is one. Holy Spirit is one who's called alongside you. God come, came to be alongside you. So this person, they named, nicknamed him um, Barnabas. Son of encouragement, one who comes alongside of you to encourage. Really, the word means the, that they should have translated as son of prophecy. Because prophecy is encouraging, encouragement, and exhorta- exhorting one another in Christ. It's a, that's pro- prophetic ministry, is encouraging one another, is prophetic ministry. And so here, he's called his, his nickname uh, Barnabas, pro- son of encouraging, pro- so son of prophecy. Look what it was. Why? Because he has generous heart. He cared, cared about, enough, about people enough to come alongside them, finish and encourage them. Encouragement is not just words we say. It is so often has to be practical. It's not just I will pray for you and you go walk away. No. Often the, and often the practical encouragement really does something as well as encouraging words. I think one of the one of the best I think act of I think encouragement is being beside you, being near you. Your presence is encouragement more than any other thing I know. Is you know, a minister presence is minister of encouragement. I believe that's why our team is out there in in, in, in Serbia and, and Turkey as well. Not that they will do a great things and they will, because the fact that they spend. $10,000, $15,000 just to get, be out there with them. People may say, why don't you send the money? It'll be so much easier. Just send the money, they'll get more work done. You spend $15,000 traveling to get out there and spend uh, and, uh, five days with kids, with Romanian kids in Novi Sad. You cannot even speak the language. What can you really do? If they need to translate every single thing they do. But the fact that they, I mean, they do, they will do a lot of other things. But the fact that they are there to say, we believe what you're doing. We believe in you. We believe, we believe in what God is doing in this camp. We believe in what God is doing with this preschool you know, uh, camp for the Chinese immigrant kids in, in Belgrade. We believe in you. And that's an act of encouragement. Because this is the work of our God. And the second thing about Barnabas, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sweep through the Bible a little bit. Now, this is where having your own Bible is easier than having a phone. If you're going to, if you, I'm going to, because of the sake of time, I'm going to just re- reference it. I'll just put it up here. I'll reference it. Now, Barnabas is mentioned about three other main places in the book of Acts. First is mentioned in the early church how he encouraged people by his finances, but not generous heart. Chapter 9 is when, um, is, this is where Paul, uh, Saul, a persecutor of the church, meets God. This is the guy who is breathing threats and he is catching all the Christians and putting them into jail. He is putting and, and uh, giving them thumbs down to get them killed. That's Saul. And Saul was on the way to Damascus to catch more Christians and put them into jail. On the way that Saul meets God and gets radically transformed because he encountered living Jesus. And, and, and now, and after that, this, this Saul who got converted, right after that he goes out and begins to preach the gospel to Damascus, and everybody is dumbfounded because this is a, you know, an amazing preacher, not only an amazing preacher, but he was out there boldly talking about something that he was against. In a matter of few days, he's now preaching against preaching 
about Jesus. Now, many Christians were still feared him. They didn't, you know, they didn't believe. Did he really change? Maybe this is just a, you know, uh, uh, he's just acting so he can catch more Christians. He's acting like I'm a, I'm a Christian. I got transformed so he can catch more Christians. Who knows? And now, and people who wouldn't, wouldn't trust him, even he's preaching the gospel and doing God's work. Now, Saul ended up coming to Jerusalem, and, no, and no, none of the apostles and leaders want to see him because they couldn't trust him. But somebody would be an encourager to him. It says, verse 26, when Saul arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to meet with the believers, but they were all afraid of him. They did not believe he had truly become a believer. Then Barnabas, son of encouragement, son of prophecy, brought him to the apostles and told them how Saul has seen the Lord on the way to Damascus. He vouched for them. He vouched for him. He brought him because who Barnabas was a well-respected leader among the Christians, he brought Barnabas along with him to these apostles and, 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 and began to tell them how the Lord met him on, how he, met, he had seen the Lord on the way to Damascus, how the Lord had spoken to Saul. He also told them that Saul had preached boldly in the name of Jesus in Damascus. He, somebody vouched for him. He's, he's there vouching for him. Somebody believing in him when nobody else would. That's encouragement, isn't it? Uh, Chuck Sundar called it an endorsement encouragement. Endorsement encouragement, he called it. Now, and we need in, in, in our daily life, when we live, we need, often need some people to come and believe in us. To say, hey, I believe in you. You know, and I'll vouch for you. Because you know what? You know, we live in a very sarcastic world. Nobody believes in anything. Nobody trusts in anything. I, I, I even, I realize it, it, fastest way to get a job is somebody who's working in the company knows people inside, vouches for you, knows you, to let you know when the job opening is there. That's the best way to get a job. Right? Somebody vouching for you. And, and, and there is need of encouragement that comes as we believe in people, seeing potential in people, and supporting them, encouraging them. He did. <coughs> and he says, the soul, uh, soul stayed with the apostles and went all around the Jerusalem with them, preaching boldly in the name of the Lord. Because there was Barnabas. I want to uh, run quickly to uh, chapter 11. This is an amazing place in the Bible. Because of the persecution of, uh, persecution of Christians, a lot of Christians are spreading all over uh, the area. From Jerusalem, they went beyond. Now, there are some of them are arriving in Antioch of Syria, which is third largest city, city in Roman Empire. And now, until now, until then, the Christians are all Jews. And they were telling other Jews to, about Jesus Christ. Now, at Antioch, some of the Jews, uh, Jewish Christians were telling the Greeks, non-Jews, about Jesus Christ. And they are not only te- preaching to your, their own kind of people, they are preaching to everybody outside. As they did that, the church began to come about and grow, mixed, not only, not mixed with people from Jew- Jewish people as well as Gentiles, all people coming along, and church was exploding. Amazing things are happening. And the news arrived in Jerusalem where the apostles were, and they were a little skeptical. Is this really happening? They were still skept- skept- skeptical whether Gentiles can come to be saved in Christ Jesus Christ. There's some of them still had doubts. Only, or oh, you have to become a Jew before you become a Christian kind of thing was, that was there. So now they wanted to send somebody. The solution was, you guessed it, Barnabas. Encourage. He goes down there because he is also a Greek-speaking Jew. He's a Jewish person who grew up in Cyprus. And he, and he goes out there, and this is what it says. When the church at Jerusalem heard of what happened, they sent Barnabas to Antioch. 
when he, Barnabas, arrived and saw this evidence of God's blessing, he was filled with joy and he encouraged then believers to stay true to the Lord. He does who he is. He encouraged them to be stay in the Lord. He rejoiced with them. I don't know what kind of people, what kind of person you are. You know, you come to see kids play, do VBS, you come and are you the one kind of looking in the back? This sounds not right. You shouldn't be having too much fun in God. Now, I grew up in those days when people thought you, you, you have to be serious when you come to know God. You have to be solemn, right? And, and, and I, I, I came to Christ when people thought even playing guitar was wrong. And an elder yelled in a, looking at me, glaring at me for nine months because we had guitar and drum. Drum? When I walked, when, when he came out of service, he would say, why don't you just sing hymns? It was piano. There's, anyway, so I don't, maybe one of those, you know, I don't know if that's true. But he comes, he sees what's happening, he rejoices in what God is doing in them. He sees all kind of people worshiping God. He was not bound by Jewish mentality. You have to become a Jew before you come to know God. And he rejoiced in them and he encouraged them. And that's, that's who we were. And look at what he says. Barnabas was a good man. I like that. I want somebody to say that I was a good man. Full of the Holy Spirit and strong in faith. And many people were brought to the Lord. And as he come, he is now helping what's going on. And God is doing more great, greater work in that place. Many are coming to know Christ. He doesn't stop there. Look at the next verse. This is an amazing verse. Then Barnabas went on to Tarsus to look for Saul. Now, by now, this is about at least 10 years later. But they know he saw Barnabas, Barnabas, Saul many years later. Now, now he's hidden. But Saul is back at his hometown in Tarsus. Nobody knows him anymore. Now he remembers Saul and he goes. When he found him, he brought him to back to Antioch. Both of them stayed there with the church for a full year, teaching large crowd of people. It was at Antioch that the believers were first called Christians. So the thing that amazes me is when great things are happening, you see here Barnabas goes and look for somebody to come and help. He, he didn't, he, he was not one of those, you know, where he needed to get all the glory. Or he wanted the name for himself. He would like, he want to invite others to come along. Let's see, let's do together what God is doing. He was a team player. He was not a, he was not one who hogs all the glory. He's the one who invites others to run together to see God's work done more. Chuck Swindoll calls it, um, he called it servant-hearted, unselfish encouragement. I don't think we can encourage anyone unless we, unless we are, uh, if we are, if we are selfish. Selfish person cannot really encourage. Maybe that's, that's me. Maybe that's why I am not good at encouraging people. You know, so when you're self-centered, you're always thinking about yourself first, and that's where your mindset starts from. It's difficult to encourage others. And Barnabas wasn't. Now, um, I am skipping a lot of things. I'm, let me just say one more, this one thing. This is probably the amazing thing that I love the most. I wish I had three hours to talk about this. We'll have a dinner here. We'll eat and talk about this. Chapter 13, book of, ch ch book of Acts, chapter 13 is my, one of my favorite chapters in the whole Bible. This is where I find the model of the church that ought to be. This is where... Uh, a church in Antioch blossoms, and you find five leaders serving there as leaders. Chapter, one, chapter 13, verse 1 through 3 talks about there are five leaders. There is Barnabas, and there is Manian, and, and there are, I forgot the other names. Okay, let me, let me check the, okay. I'm not like Pastor Robinson, who memorized the whole book of the Bible. Okay, okay. I wish I had this memory. Okay, it says, there was, uh, he says, uh, there were at Antioch in the church that, were, uh, that was there prophets and teachers, Barnabas and si Simeon, who was called Niger. You know what that means, right? Black person. And Lucius of Cy Cyrene. 
And Manayan, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, well, Manayan grew up in the palace and saw the five people leading the church together with all walks of life, all backgrounds, they're all building the church together. This is the model of the church I find. And while they're praying, Holy Spirit says, set apart two people for me. I'm going to send them out. And they, God chooses, the, chooses Barnabas and Saul, two of the best, to send them out. And those two are sent out to uh, missions, to the first ever missionary trip. They send them out. And look at verse 4. So Barnabas and Saul were sent out by the Holy Spirit. They went down to the seaport of Seleucia and then sailed for the island of Cyprus. There in the town of Salamis. Yum. My mind wanders away. <laughs> Salamis. Okay. They went to Jewish synagogues and preached the word of God. I, want you to, I highlighted the word here. John Mark went with them as their sister. John Mark probably was a cousin to Barnabas. He comes along. Now I'm going to jump down to verse 13. Paul and his companions then left Paphos by ship for Pamphylia. Now they are in the island preaching the gospel. And, and after a while, I don't know if you noticed, before it was Barnabas and Paul. Now it's Paul and his companions. The names, all of the names changed. At the port of or poor town of Perga. Then there John Mark left them and returned to Jerusalem. But Paul and Barnabas traveled inland to Antioch of Pisidian, Pisidia. Now the story really is that as Paul and, and Barnabas go on a mission trip, Barnabas leading the team, and they, put, they brought a young man along with, which is John Mark. In the middle of the trip, John Mark, whatever reason, didn't want to go along anymore. He left. He left the mission team, went back home. You find in chapter 15, many years down the line, the Apostle Paul and, and Barnabas, after coming back from the first mission trip, they want to go back to the second one. Now, they, this is what they say. After some time, Paul said to Barnabas, let's go back and visit each city where we previously preached the word of the Lord to see how the new believers are doing. Look at verse 37. Barnabas agreed and wanted to take along John Mark. But Paul disagreed strongly since John Mark had deserted them in Pamphylia and had not continued with them in their work. Paul says, I'm not taking John Mark. He quit in the middle. He discouraged us. Why do I want, why do I want to take him again? He's going to quit in the middle again. It says, their disagreement was so sharp. They, were, this, they disagreed. These two godly men, Paul and Barnabas, disagreed so sharply that they separated. Barnabas took John Mark with him and sailed for Cyprus. Paul chose Silas as he, as he left. The believers entrusted him to the Lord's gracious care. Now, you, after this, you'll never find Barnabas ever mentioned in the book of Acts. In the, in the letters, Paul may mention it here and there a little bit, but Barnabas does not, 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 do not get mentioned in the history of the early church. He disappears because he was vouching for John Mark. He failed once. He wanted to give him a second chance. We do all fail sometimes. We do all make some stupid mistakes. If we always get what we deserve all the time, when you fail, none of us will make it. And here you find this encouragement, the spirit of God, the spirit of prophecy on Barnabas who encourages. He takes one who failed and he takes second chance on him and walks with him. See, Paul forgot that Barnabas did, for that, did, that, for, did that for him. But Barnabas is, this is a man led by the Spirit of God. He's the one who's encouraged, he's the one who failed. He encouraged that, picks them up, he takes him along. By the way, at the end, Mark becomes the writer of the first gospel, Gospel Mark. 
If Barnabas didn't take him along and give him second chance, encourage them who would not have the gospel of Mark. If, Paul, if Barnabas didn't vouch for Paul, we did not have all the apostles, Paul's letters. Half of the New Testament would be gone because it's one man. But led by the Spirit of God, encouraged, encouraged those around him. That's ministry of encouragement. That's ministry of prophecy. Chuck Swindoll called it second chance encouragement. We need that, don't we? I need it. I need it. And I go, I go back to the first, first passage we read, chapter 4, book of Acts. Church was blossoming and growing. The love among them because somebody, people like Barnabas who was moving in the spirit of God, exercising gift of encouragement. They were building the body of Christ. It's, it is that what is building the body of Christ. Prophecy is not saying you are wrong, you should change that's, oh, that's, there's time for that. Most of the time, prophecy is really encouraging people to love God and continue in the course that was to, supposed to go on. That's the ministry of the Spirit of God. One who come, come, comes alongside of you when you are having difficult time. Often the presence of encouragement is important. Being next to you and say, hey, I'm here, I believe in you. You'll make it. That Even that... Words encourages, strengthens. And our God is God of encouragement. Is, isn't that what Jesus did? Jesus took nobodies, the rejects of the society, the tax collectors which people hated, people saw as traitors. He cho chose them when nobody would choose them. And he changed, transformed them, used them for God's glory and took them. That's what Jesus did. That's the ministry of encouragement. Taking those who are broken, broken vessels, and guiding it, and God using that for God's glory. I, I might have told this story already. I remember my second, second trip to Serbia, which was two years ago. Um, you know, and, and, uh, and we, were, we were going to speak at, we, we, I, we had three leaders that I brought, brought along so that they would preach. I, did, I found out when we were out there, all three of them were introverts. I didn't realize that, and at least two, of them, two out of three were introverts. And some of them, some one of them really seriously introvert. And I remember uh, at the uh, Chinese um, church having a youth camp. These kids never been, a lot of them never been to church. I remember it was the second night, uh, Hyungyu was speaking. Since he was here, I'll tell you. He was speaking. He was going all over the place. He was flipping to the notes for an hour. And you, you along the with you translated there, right? And, and, People were like, we're dying. <laughs> and at the, at, at, at the last 10 minutes, he starts, he starts giving a testimony. And he said, literally he said, I used to sell drugs. And all the kids, and they're all just looking at him, right? And they're, huh. And he talked about how he was, you know, into drugs and to just dealing drugs. And, you know, how, you know, and, and, and he ended up going to DTS and his life has changed. And, 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 and now he was sharing about that. And that night he shared, the next 10 minutes, all the kids were listening. All the parents in the, in the back were listening. I don't know if I want my kids to listen to this guy. But, and then we had an altar call. Every youth ran up, all stood up in front. Ran up, all stood up. I remember one of the kids, a couple of the kids in the morning, they said, we, I don't like this, it's boring, I want to go home. And I remember we had to beg them to stay. That night, every one of them ran up. They all got saved. And because I said, why? It's such a boring message. <laughs> but when he's talked about how he was broken, how God changed, his testimony of brokenness, God changing, encouraged people. That is a testimony of God's goodness. It's the ministry of encouragement is what God calling us to be. And that we come alongside people, you know, and practically helping financially as well, and being there when you know, I call alongside them and, and vouch for them, and also giving them second chance, looking into the potentials that we don't, and that people do not see, giving so that we will encourage them to go. That's the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Ministry encouraging God is calling us to do. 
I'm praying that we will be that kind of community. I want to challenge you. At least twice a day, pray about doing random acts of encouragement. Twice a day, just twice a day. Random acts of encouragement. You know, little, note, little notes can be helpful. Little, little notes okay. Uh, and, and I realize uh, some, sometimes little notes will stay for a long time. I remember a number of years ago, and I, I don't want to tell the story again. This is another it's a long story. Let me stop right here. Let me just, uh, I'm going to skip a lot of things. I found this thing. John Max was one of my other favorite preachers. I love his teachings. He says, encouragement is air, oxygen for the soul. O- encouragement is oxygen for the soul. I will this is right. Our marriage comes alive stronger when we begin when we encourage one another as God leads us. Our children come alive vibrant as we encourage them in godly ways. And our community, our workplaces change when we let by the Spirit of God, God's Spirit of God leads us as we encourage one another, encourage others. Even those who does not know, we don't have to say God is saying anything. We just we can come and encourage. God transforms things. God restores things. I share this message because I needed to hear it. I need to hear it. I don't know about you. You know, uh, I need to hear it. I'm, I have to preach in comfort. Yes, I'm a pastor. I've been in ministry for I don't know how, forever. As Benjamin Robinson said, 127 years. <laughs> Long time. But, you know, to be honest, you know, because you are in leadership, you know, and you, have, you, can, you, know, you cannot come to church looking, you know, like, you know, uh, you're, you know, moping on, whatever. You have to look as if everything's okay. We do that, Right? We are called to encourage. We are called to be um, build up others. That's who our God is. When we encourage as the Spirit of God leads us, we are being what Christ called us to be. We are being more like our Lord Jesus. I think one of the most powerful ways of encouragement is being there for somebody. I don't know about you. I, I'm, I'm not good at words. When I meet people, I'm not really always sharp and good at saying the right things. My wife is good at it. I am not. When I say things, I often make a make mess of things. My wife said, you, you are helping if you don't do anything. <laughs> about, about a week and a half ago, my wife said, you know, the, the water hose from the back you know, would not come out of the faucet. So I tried to fix it. And I twist the whole pipe. Mr. Hoon came and said, pot, 150 bucks, just to fix it. My wife said, do not do anything. <laughs> but you know, but you can always be there when somebody's in need. Being there is powerful encouragement. Isn't that who our God is? God who is with us. He doesn't always have to say things to us. He's just there beside us. Not always saying this is the answer, but it's there. I am the answer. I'll just be next to you. That's our God. Don't we need our Lord God standing next to us? Often many think that things are getting better. Sometimes can I take a wrong turn? You know, and we do need that encouragement of second chance. Encouragement of, you know, um, unselfish servant heart. Encouragement of, of uh, vouching for somebody. Encouragement of endorsement. Practical encouragement as well. I still remember a number of years ago. I'll end with this. When I was at, when I was at Gordon Conroe in the summer, um, I was taking summer class. And, and my father-in-law in Hawaii, who was in coma, passed away. And I remember after class, you know, we were showing prayers in my class, seminary class. And, 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 some, and, and I, I asked, you know, can you pray, can you pray for encouragement for my family? My father-in-law passed away, my, mother, my mother-in-law and everything else. And, and, so, and, and, 
and then they, we pray. One, one guy came. Uh, somebody I do not know. He's just a classmate. He comes and says, are you going to Hawaii? No. I said, why not? Is it money? He said, I'll, I'll pay for your family. A guy I've never met. I'll pay for family. I said, no, it's, it's not just the money. But the fact is, you know what, I'll pay for it. He said, your God has blessed me with finances. I want to pay for it. So we didn't go, but I didn't go. But, you know, and, I mean, we ended up going later, but anyway, we didn't need his money. But the fact that this guy, I barely know, he's just a classmate, seminary student. He said, do you need money? He said, why are you not going? I'll, I'll pay for it. And, I, and, I, and that was, just, I still remember this already almost 20 years ago now. That encouragement, right? Because we believe in our God. He's a good and amazing God, isn't he? I'm so grateful that a lot of ladies are helping out when some of uh, ladies have babies, you know, and, and I know there are food train going around, people bringing food for people. I mean, little things really encourage. I mean, I mean it's not a little thing, but, you know, encourages, strengthens people. God is calling us to be people of encouragement. Let's all stand. Father, we just come today. We confess that we want to be more like you. We confess that we are broken people, being restored, being recreated by your grace. Father God, we confess that we need you. We come today, God, God, who is God of all comforts, that you will draw near, God. Thank you for calling us, inviting us to encourage one another, build up one another. And Father God, follow your, follow your ways of encouraging one another. Even in our brokenness, we encourage others, God. As we refresh others, we'll be refreshed as well. So be upon us, be upon this community. This community will be built upon the ministry of encouragement, God. Our lives will be filled with the ministry of encouragement wherever we are, God. We pray for our mission team in Serbia. Father God, indeed, Spirit, you'll work with them to encourage, to strengthen the feeble need. need. Father, you'll use them to, Father God, encourage those uh, brokenhearted. They'll bind up the brokenhearted, God. They'll strengthen the weak need, weak ankled. You'll come and strengthen them. I ask your grace over them. Father, we come, we say we need your encouragement as well. We need you, God. We honor you, we give you glory. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray.